Welcome back. Uh, the President, Bola Ahmed Tinubu, has signed the 28.7 trillion Naira 2024 appropriation bill into law. That's a topic of discussion this morning. And our guest is Mr. Bolahon Olojede. Uh, good morning and welcome to the program. Uh, good morning. Nice to be on the program. Happy New Year to you. I will wish you the same. Okay, 2024 is looking up, and uh, we hope that it's going to be a better year than 2023. Mm. Yes. Yesterday, um, yeah, yesterday yes. we heard... We heard... Uh, what, what bookmakers think is actually a tough year. Mm. Uh, but you see, every crisis, in every crisis, there is an opportunity. Mm. So it depends on which side you're looking. Yeah. Okay. Well, we are glad for the optimism. Uh, we're hoping that everybody will take advantage of the of whatever presents itself. Let me not say yeah. of the crisis because there's no <laughs> crisis yet. Uh, well, um, maybe like we said, things are looking up and in every situation you can always uh, uh, find something that will be very beneficial to you. We have seen a budget that was sent to the National Assembly just above uh, 27 trillion. And now we have uh, a National Assembly that has uh, jacked it up a little bit by more than one trillion. So we have a budget of 28 point something trillion uh, naira being signed into law. Uh, what is that to you? When you heard that uh, budget being, and the, the breakdown of the budget, what came to your mind? Are we looking at a 2024 that will be good? Or as tough as you said, some experts have said? Mm. Well, uh, the, the, the inclusion, the additional 1.2 trillion, um, it's, it, it has become the normal thing when uh, budget is. Started us way back uh, in uh, good, good luck Jonathan's era. Uh, when they started, you, know, you send the budget to the National Assembly they will put some things on it and send it back to you. And we've not been able to get out of that. Um, there has been arguments here and there about whether this is the right thing to do uh, or not. However, it is what it is. That is where we are right now. <clears throat> Two things about budget. Number one, it's supposed to be a planning document. Number two, it is a law, uh, the, the Appropriation Act. So it is an authority to spend legally. Uh, th th those are two very important parts to the budget. Now, on the side of budget being a planning document, I don't think we are quite there yet. Our budget still does not reflect uh, the level of what, what I would call seriousness that I expect to see of a planning document. So. How do you how do you just increase the budget by 1.2 trillion, for example? It, it, it's it's um, it, 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 when you go into the assumptions for that budget, that is when you begin to question uh, a few things here and there. So that is what I mean by I, I'm not so sure that we are quite there when it comes to making budget a real planning document. But on the other side, which is what the politicians might be more excited about, is to say budget is also an authority to spend. So on that issue of authority to spend, it might actually be what is driving the inclusion of new items or new amounts into various segments of the budget. Mm. But, but okay, so, so... Sorry, sorry, sorry <laughs> Rume. Uh, <clears throat> you, you said something that uh, made me remember. The reason given by the National Assembly uh, for maybe adding more than one trillion naira to the budget is that they are projecting a revenue rise from the um, government-owned enterprises, which is, to me, an assumption because these people promised that they were going to make sure that IGR was going to be better than it was in 2023. So based, based on these promises by the uh, government-owned enterprises, they moved up this budget. Is that not a recipe for disaster, basing a budget on assumptions that may or may not come to fruition? Okay, technically speaking, budgets are based on assumption. In fact, a critical part of a budget document is what you call budget assumptions. 
So it is based on these assumptions that the figures are crafted. However, where the problem comes in is when you uh, try to dig into this assumption. You have mentioned the fact that there is uh, an assumption that the, the government enterprises will generate more revenue. The question is how? Mm. So in a proper budget assumption situation, the exact how this new revenue or this additional revenue are going to be generated is important. It goes beyond promises. I promise to generate this much. What is the basis for that additional uh, generation? That is what made assumptions uh, more reliable and something that we can work with for the purpose of the budget. That's why I said, from a planning document perspective, I'm not sure we are quite there. A, 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 the, the head of a particular uh, a government enterprises cannot or enterprise cannot just come and say, oh, um, because of the engagement I had with uh, uh, the National Assembly, uh, we will increase revenue by so, so much. That is not how it works. How it works is that because we are going to be doing so, so activity, which will generate this amount of income every day or every month, we will be able to add this much by multiplying how much we are generating per month by 12, and this is what it will come to. That is what val and the valid assumption does. It is not just a promise. Okay. So the question would be, those promises that were made that, that informed the increase in budgetary provision or, or, or revenue, were they valid? Were they tested? Were they challenged? Were there numbers behind them? Which is the exact question mm -hmm. I want to ask yeah. you right now. The, the reason why they're jacking up this budget, are those reasons valid? Or is it just maybe some other frivolous spendings, just like the, um, the yachts that we had seen that they said it was for the military, or the 160 million SUVs for the politicians? Are they jacking this up for their own pockets, or because they needed to increase our revenue? Well, you see, whatever you want to spend, um, that, that is the expenditure side of the budget, and there's also the revenue side of the budget. What they have done with the government enterprises is to use their revenues to jack up the revenue side mm. of the budget. To say, look, you said you were going to make this much. Can you make an additional this much on top of it? The other side, which is the expenditure, is where it is about what you are going to spend this revenue on. That is where that comes in. So for me, as citizens, we must pay close attention to budgets than we have in the past. So all those expenditures that have been listed, there, there was a time in my life when I used to sit down with the national budget and put, go, you know, dissect it. And what I have found out in those years were not exactly exciting. Mm. As thing, you know, maybe things have changed. It is possible that things have changed. What you find out, for example, uh, expenses that are duplicated, all sort of expenses duplicated across several departments, number one. We have also seen, because it became a, a media issue, situations in which you have budget owners who are, say, who are saying, I didn't know anything about that particular item that is my budget. I, I didn't put it there. Mm -hmm. We've seen situations like that in this, in this country before. We also have situations in which items of expenditure the same item with the same description carry different prices. Mm. So if I'm going to be doing an electronic street light in Cross River, it should be about the same cost if I'm doing an electronic street light also in Abuja or in Kano. But where you have a situation in which price in a particular area is more than double what it is in another area, it shows that um, we need to do a lot more work if budget is actually going to be a proper planning document for us as a country. The assumption around oil, for example, um, how uh, the amount of production, the oil production uh, uh, has gone up, what is informing it? What is, what is driving it? We must be able to substantiate all these assumptions, make it reasonable. Otherwise, it becomes just a joke, and it will be a mere authority to spend. So whatever we make, after all, we have an authority to spend. Then we'll just go ahead and spend. That is not um, where we ought to be as far as budget. Hmm.
<laughs> it's uh, I don't even know what to ask anymore about 2024 uh, because some of the items on the budget uh, that need uh, attention, something like uh, education, for instance, is still having like 7.5 percent mm -hmm. of the budget. When the United Nations or UNICEF is talking about 25 percent or so, it didn't even get up to 10 percent or 15 percent, and. I don't know, because every nation is judged to be as great as the people who are educated in That's it. That's right. Where are we going in Nigeria? Okay. Uh, it is also important that we know that there are two issues um, from a, a, a size, a budget size, that readily comes to my mind when I think of Nigeria's budget. Number one is the reality that it is too small. It is tiny. That might be the right word to describe it. And you, you, you may not see how tiny is it until you place it beside other African countries. My typical example will remain South Africa. South Africa's budget is about four to five times that of Nigeria. Despite the fact that South Africa has barely a quarter of our population. So when your budget is too small, you see, it, it, it's a situation of two chicken laps to be shared among three elders. You are going to cost trouble. The budget itself is paltry. So we must be able to think along that direction, what do we need to do to raise our budget dramatically from what it is. What, what South Africa gets from VAT alone in some years was bigger than the entire budget of Nigeria. So when you look at that, there's a problem. Number two is the fact that you now have this tiny budget that is not enough to go around. How do you spend that amount? Are you going to be wise? How wise are you with spending the little amount that you have obtained? So these are the two sides when you consider the quantum of Nigeria's budget. Now, you spoke about education, 7%, yes. Um, we need to be able to show up. For example, that South Africa that I mentioned, education is about 20, between 25 and 28% of the budget. In fact, the education budget alone in South Africa is about the size of the entire budget of Nigeria. So it... it but then, Nigeria's topmost budget goes to defense. Why? Or has gone to defense, at least this year. Because oh. we have serious insecurity challenges. Yes. If we don't deal with the insecurity challenges, nobody will even go to the schools. True. True. Okay, but now you're saying we need to raise up our budget because, in your words, it's a tiny budget. But my question is, how do we fund this budget? How do we fund it? Yeah, we we'll raise it. How, if we're raising it up to maybe as high as South Africa's budget, which is five times ours, how are we supposed to fund them? Are we going to keep borrowing to fund this budget just because we want it to be higher so then it can turn into revenue, which is also an assumption? So we need to look at our revenue sources as a country. Okay. <clears throat> the question is, what do we need to do about taxes? And then what do we need to do about our non-tax revenues? Those are the two main sources of our revenue. Now, let's start with taxes. When you hear taxes, the first thing that comes to people's mind is, oh, they want to increase that. But that is not where it starts. Where issues about taxation income start from is the taxes that are even currently on the table, how much of it are we able to collect? What is the collection efficiency of the taxation that is on the table? That is number one. So if we deal with that, and then let's remember that there is an unreaching contract between the government and the people when it comes to taxation. That unwritten contract is to say, look, I will give you my taxes. You will use the taxes to better my life. So I want to be able to see better road. I want to see better education. I want to see better infrastructure. I want to see better health care. Mm -hmm. Where people are not able to see enough of that, they shine, they, 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 they shun taxation. They avoid it. They evade it. They are not excited about giving their tax. But where people can see what you're using their taxes for, and what you're using their taxes for goes beyond, I want to buy a yacht, or I want to uh, um, feed some you know, uh, uh, things that are not properly done, 
or I want to pump more money into the bureaucracy without any undue, without any due justification, people are not happy. Right. So that affects the current status of taxation. After that, you think of how to bring more people into the taxation net. A lot of people today are not paying taxes. They are paying extortion. Mm. So people come to you and say, uh, you're supposed to pay this much. You keep your hand into your wallet and you give them 10000 or And those money that you are giving them, you call it taxes. They're not taxes because the government has no access to those kind of money. Mm. That what you're paying is extortion, not taxation. So we also need to bring more people into that tax net. Make the collection efficiency improve before we even start talking about increasing certain taxation. Okay. Now, we must understand who are the who are these taxpayers. The taxpayers are of different categories. Well, the corporate taxpayers, what do we need to do to make them make more money? Because it is from the money that they make that they are able to pay you taxes. Right. So correcting the business environment, making it more uh, friendly, making it possible for them to make more money is important. <clears throat> if you get, if you're going to get money from the corporate people, their business will do well because they pay you from the profits. On the individual basis, we find a situation in which the highest any part of the economy are barely paying taxes. Most of the taxes from income, personal income taxes that we get in this country are coming from the middle class. People who are in paid employment like you and I, whose taxes are deducted at source and remitted. The people who are the top earners are not carrying their fair share of taxation, personal income tax in this country. And we also need to look in that direction, especially for the income of the states. Mm. You know? So there are a lot of things we need to do in terms of income. We must ask ourselves, why is VAT income about the size of the entire uh, uh, return revenue of the federal government in Nigeria. The VAT income in South Africa, why is it about the size of the, of the retain, retain revenue of the, of, of, of the federal government of Nigeria? So we need to do a lot more in that revenue. And okay. don't be scared. When we need to do a lot, it doesn't have to be increased taxes on people. All right, so since we're talking about um, income um, for the revenue, let's talk about foreign investments. Um, I want to believe that would also impact our revenue. But then a lot of people are saying that we don't even have an economy to thrive in um, for these foreign invest investors to come in. But the precedent is moving everywhere in the world looking for people to come into Nigeria to invest. But just tell us, how can this also improve um, our revenue, which in turn you know, also affects our budget as well. Right. Um, foreign direct investment is a, is a direct function of the business environment. Uh, if you remember, one of the projects that, you know, was on the dashboard all through the last administration was how to improve the business environment of Nigeria. Yeah. Um, much was achieved in that direction um, is, 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 is left to be seen. I think they did a bit, but there is a whole lot more uh, that is still on the table that we need to do in terms of improving the business environment. So I ask you, if I'm an investor and I'm coming into Nigeria, and I'm talking of coming to do um, some agriculture on the plateau, uh, the, the plateau has certain advantages when it comes to agriculture. And then on Christmas Day, 200 people got killed. Uh, how excited am I going to be about coming into that kind of an environment? Probably not. If I'm coming into an environment, and I, I from, from, from the information I had, uh, there were about 50 different taxes that I will be exposed to when I come into the business. How excited will I be? I, I know that there is currently a committee that is working on streamlining the multiple taxation regime in Nigeria. Uh, we wish them good luck, and I will hope that they will be able to deliver on that mandate because it is critical to all those invitation to foreign direct investors to come into the country. Issues around volatility of the currency. When I bring my money here and I do business, will I be able to take the money out? If I'm able to take the money out, at what rate will I be able to take that money out? How long will it take me to take the money out? All those issues are considerations for foreign direct investment. What is the state of the infrastructure? Uh, especially the one that affect the kind of business that are coming into your country. Mm. So 
there are still factors in out that we must fix that will encourage investors to come into this place. Nigeria remains a good market. The population is huge. Um, the, it's also a huge consumer country by virtue of that anyway. So there are people who are looking into that market. They are looking into it and they can come in. Mm -hmm. But we need to fix all those little distortions here and there and what might not encourage them to want to bring their investment. All right. That's a very good way to drop in. <laughs> we'll have to wrap up on this segment. But thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. Thank you. And Happy New Year thank once again. Thank you, Bola. Yeah. Thank you. All right. We've been speaking to Bola on Olujede. He's a public affairs analyst. And we're talking about the... 28.7 trillion an hour appropriation bill that the president has signed into law. Anyways, we'll take a quick break, look at the weather, and when we return, we'll be looking at our next hot topic. Stay with us. <laughs>